The Quaker Oats Company, makers of fine foods for the whole family, presents America's favorite family, the Nelsons. Ozzy, Harriet, David, and Ricky. And now a word about one of the many fine Quaker products, Kennel Ration. Picking the right puppy to belong to is a mighty important decision. Yes, there's no other dog in the world like yours. No other dog food like Kennel Ration. America's favorite dog food. Dogs grow strong and healthy on kennel ration. It's so good and wholesome. Kennel ration is packed with lean red meat. It contains wholesome steaks, chops, and roasts of U.S. government inspected horse meat, plus other nutrients a dog is known to need. The kind of protein-rich food today's dogs require. <laughs> yes. There's no other dog in the world like yours. And no other dog food like kennel ration. Put your trust in kennel ration with lean red meat. More people do. Now Quaker invites you to enjoy the adventures of the Nelson family. And the bill will be presented to the governor in three weeks. And now for a complete rundown on the local news. Did I tell you what happened to Mrs. Anderson? No, I don't think so. Well, the women's club is having a dinner next week. We don't know who the speaker's going to be yet. And she was selling these tickets. She sold two books before she found out they were for last year's dinner. Oh, <laughs> how about that? Oh, I bumped into Sally Darby today. She told me the Van Schuylers are getting a new car. Oh, really? Well, what kind? Well, I don't know, but the payments are $62 a month. Well, gee, that sounds like a good car. Oh, and poor little Bobby Wilson has them up. Oh, that's a shame. Mr. Wilson's moved into the Y. He's never had them. Oh, why didn't he have Doc Williams give him a shot? Oh, you know Eileen the checker at the market? Yeah. Well, she was telling me that June Williams is going to have Doc's office completely refurnished. Oh, well, that's good news. He could stand it. I hope they get some new magazines in there. His nurse is getting married, you know. Oh, well, good for her. And that concludes today's local news. What did you do today? Me? Yeah, anything interesting happen? Oh... No, nothing interesting. Thought you were going to have lunch with Joe. Oh, yeah, I did, but that wasn't very interesting. I mean, it's not unusual. Uh, I have lunch with him all the time. What'd you talk about? <laughs> what is this, a third degree? No, I'm just interested in what you did all day. Don't you want to tell me? Well, sure, but I don't remember every little thing I do. Well, you don't try. Hey, wait a second. I just remembered something. I won the golf tournament at the club. That was last Saturday. Well, I, 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 I think I told you. Eileen told me. You mean the, the, the checker at the market? That's right. Darby told Sally. Sally told her, and she congratulated me. Well, I, I'm sure I told you about it. Oh, you did. You told me you won, but Eileen told me the details. You were in the rough on the 6th, 12th, and 14th holes. You four-putted five greens, but you won because you had such a good handicap. I'd have to tell you anything. You have more news sources than the Associated Press. Well, that's not the point. I like to hear what happened straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> Nothing personal, dear. Oh. <laughs> well, come on. What did you do today? Well, uh, th th it was nothing important. I, I had lunch with Joe, and we talked about golf. Uh, now, now, wait a second. There, there was something. Oh, yeah, he and Clara are coming over to play bridge. When? Oh, in about uh, 45 minutes. 45 minutes? We haven't even had dinner yet. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I was too busy listening to the news. <laughs> to play me a game of gin rummy while we're waiting on. <laughs> well, I don't want to make a mistake. <laughs> you just did. Well, I don't see any trophies for bridge playing on our mantelpiece. It's not for bridge, that's for golf. Well, I don't see any of those on our mantelpiece either. And I could have won one if I'd had a phony handicap like Oz's. You're talking about phony handicap. Well, you know darn well that's the only reason you won the tournament. Now, wait a minute. Let's get this straight. Are we arguing about golf or bridge? No. Well, I don't want to play bridge anymore anyway. What do you want to do? Well, let's just sit around and talk. That's okay with me. <laughs> Did you hear about Millie Benson? No, what about her? He's got to have a baby. Really? Oh, yeah. Didn't Ozzy tell you? 
No. Oh, that's funny. Joe said Ed Benson came by his table today when he was having lunch with Ozzy. That is, Joe was having lunch with Ozzy when Ed came over. Oh. Joe said they bought a new house. Really? They need more room. Well, I guess they do if they're expecting a baby. Well, that's not why they need more room. Millie's mother's moving in with them. Oh. <laughs> hey, it sure was a surprise to see George Young, eh, Oz? Oh, uh, yeah. How long has it been since you've seen him? Oh, a couple of years. Did you have lunch with him? No, I just happened to be there. He's put on a little weight. About 20 pounds, I'd say. Well, uh, yeah, at, uh, at least 20 pounds. Say, what do you think about their raising the prices? What's this? At the club. Didn't Ozzy tell you? No. They're raising the price of the businessman's lunch to $1.75. From $1.65. Well, I think it's awful. Joe, I think you ought to take your lunch with you from now on. Well, isn't it worth 10 cents more to have me eat in the place where I get all this news? <laughs> Same price as a newspaper. But, uh, say, uh, would you like a Coke, Clara? Oh, that sounds good. Uh, Harriet? Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, come on, uh, give me a hand, will you, Joe? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, that Ozzy thinks of everything. Sometimes. <laughs> Are you a troublemaker? What's the matter? Well, why do you have to go home and blab everything you know? What's this? A and a lot of stuff you don't know. Now, that wasn't George Young we saw at lunch today. Well, it looked like him. No, it didn't. It did, too, if George had gained 20 pounds. <laughs> why do you have to make up all that stuff? Well, I thought it was George Young. Besides, Clara likes to hear about things like this when I come home. All women do. Doesn't Harriet? Well, I don't know. I, I always forget. Do <laughs> what I do. If you can't remember, make up a few things. <laughs> why do I do that? It makes the day a little more interesting. Well, my day is interesting enough. I don't mean for you. I mean for Harriet. What did you tell her when you got home today? Well, I told her I took the bus downtown, I had lunch with you, and came home. Isn't that pretty dull? Oh, oh except having lunch with me. Uh, come to think of it, that was pretty dull, too. <laughs> <laughs> at least not the way I told it to Clara. Well, she, you made up a bunch of stuff that never happened at all. I did not. I enlarged on a few things, perhaps. For instance, what did you do this morning? Well, I walked down to the bus stop and waited for the bus. And what happened? Well, the bus came along, I got on and rode downtown. The fellow didn't come up to you and ask you directions so that you missed the bus? Well, no, of course not. <laughs> All right, you can lead a dull life if you want to. Well, that isn't the point. I just don't like phoning things up. Well, you don't seem to mind phoning up your golf handicap so you can win a tournament. <laughs> I don't have a phony golf handicap. That's not what Eileen said. Well, who, who's I? You mean the checker at the market? No, Eileen, the wife of the caddy that went around with you. <laughs> what does she know about? She wasn't even there. Oz, there are some men who like to go home and tell their wives about the interesting things that happened during the day. Well, I told Harriet about the tournament. I, I even brought the clipping home from the paper. It's right up on the board there. Oh? I don't think I saw that. Yeah, it's uh, from the club news. Who's standing next to you? Well, that, that's the club president. You know him. Ah, I mean the woman. Well, I don't know. I, I never saw her before. Did you tell Harriet about her? Why should I tell Harriet about her? I don't even know her. You don't have to know her. Isn't it enough that she wanted your autograph? That she wanted to take golf lessons from you? <laughs> well, you are a troublemaker, aren't you? I'm only trying to patch things up between you and Harriet. There's... There's nothing to patch up between Harriet and me. There will be if you insist on keeping these things from her. Well, do you fellas mind if we join the party? Oh, oh dear, glad to have you. Thought we got a couple of coats. Oh, well, uh, there are plenty in the refrigerator. Just help yourself. <laughs> well, at least you could have told me you had lunch with George Young. Uh, I didn't have lunch with him, and it wasn't George Young. It was some guy who looked like him. Well, that's interesting. Why don't you tell me that? Well, I didn't think it was important. I tell you what, the next time I see a guy who looks like George Young, I'll tell you about it. Well, you don't have to get mad about it. Well, I'm not getting mad about it. But it just seems silly to come home and make up a bunch of stories about things that didn't happen. You mean all those things Joe told Clara didn't happen? Well, uh, they happened, but they didn't happen to happen the way Joe happened to tell them. You see, uh, he exaggerates a little to make Clara happy. Well, I think that's very thoughtful of him. Well, okay. Starting tomorrow, I'll do my best to remember everything that happens. Besides which, I'll be trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, 50, very clean, and reverend. That's all I ask. Well, that's enough. Excuse me, would you tell me where I get the Forest Avenue bus? 
Oh, yes, you're going in the wrong direction. It's uh, right down there at the corner. Thank you. I'm a stranger in town. It's okay. At uh, 5.25, directed man to Forest Avenue bus. <laughs> a stranger in town. Well, hi, Oz. Oh, uh, hi there. Hi, Mr. Nelson. Hi, Jack. Uh, uh, who was that fellow that just said hello to me? That was Dave Bender. Oh, yeah, Dave. I didn't recognize him. Well, he's put on a little weight. Oh, uh, about how much would you say? Oh, I don't know. About, uh, ten pounds, I guess. Ten pounds. Or maybe fifteen. Or, uh, just making a few notes here. Oh, what do you have? Well, let's see. How about a pistachio frappe? Very good. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll have one. Okay, one pistachio frappe coming up. Pistachio. Uh, Jack, uh, maybe you'd better make that a dish of vanilla ice cream. If I can't spell it, I don't deserve to have it. Oh, all right. <laughs> Kiss and a good hot Quaker Oats breakfast. The best school day start you can give your youngster. For just as his soul is nourished by a hug and a kiss, so will his young body be nourished by a good hot breakfast of Quaker Oats. Yes, you'll keep him bright and alert for classwork, happy and healthy through the morning's active play with a nourishing hot breakfast of Quaker Oats with that wonderful oatmeal protein. Naturally, youngsters look forward to an occasional change for breakfast. So one morning, try strawberries blended right in while the oatmeal cooks. Another time, blend in pineapple or tangy applesauce. The recipe for delicious oatmeal and fruit blended is right on the package. Yes, it's so nice having a mother who starts the school day with a hug and a kiss and a good hot oatmeal breakfast made with Quaker Oats or Mother's Oats, the same high-protein oatmeal. Hi, Oz. Oh, hi, Joe. Mr. Randolph, what do you have? Well, that looks pretty good. I'll have the same thing. Met Joe Randolph. What are you doing there? Just writing a few things down. Met Dave Bender in mall shop. Didn't recognize him. He'd gained 10 or 15 pounds. What's this? Well, I, I'm making notes of everything that happens during the day so I can tell Harriet about it when I get home. You're doing what? Well, it, it, it's just a little gag, a, a joke. You, you know what a wonderful sense of humor Harriet has? Just kidding her. You mean she's going to think this is funny? Well, yes. You know how she always says, I never tell her what happens during the day? Well, I, I'm... Well, yeah, I'll show you what I mean. Here. Left house at 8.30. Uh, walked to bus stop. Sat behind a tall man reading a newspaper. What's the matter? Nothing. Go on. Uh, I went into the drugstore, uh, bought a tube of toothpaste. Large tube or small tube? A well, large tube. Why don't you write that down? A large tube of toothpaste. <laughs> Sounds pretty funny when you say it fast. <laughs> You're missing the whole point of this. I'm not striving for gags per se. This is situation comedy. Don't you see the humor of this? Harriet says I never tell her anything that happens during the day. So I'm going to write down every little inconsequential thing that happens. I, I'm sorry if you don't see the humor of this, but it happens to be very funny. That's not the point. The point is, will Harriet think it's funny? <laughs> she will. She, she knows I'm kidding. Well, it sounds sarcastic to me. It doesn't sound like you're kidding at all. Well, in, in the first place, this is all your fault. You and those phony stories you tell Clara every night. Okay, I admit it. I make up a few stories just to keep Clara happy. The only things I'm going to write down here are things that actually happen. Now, I, I'm not going to add to them. I'm not going to exaggerate. I'm going to write them down just as...